face and Barry in the morning. <laughs> Is it though? I really wanted to do like a riff on the Monster Mash, but I couldn't get anything to rhyme with like podcast. So I was like, I was working on the pod late one night and now I can't find a thing that rhymes with pod. And I just had a hard time. So I gave up and I tried to be a ghost instead and that was worse somehow. Um, Welcome everyone to (laughs) this. To this collection of noises. It's Stace and Barry in the morning, season four, episode 10. It's nearly Halloween. It's well spooky, yeah. I'm spooky Stace, and that's what's the word for spooky that begins with B? God, I, don't I know. didn't I'm, I'm, say at all. Well, I'm going to go with Professor X at the moment. Oh, okay. Well, uh, well that's Professor X then, I guess. <laughs> see, see, seeing the fact that I've put my back out, so I've kind of been poured into this chair. Um, are you just getting like dragged around your house in an office chair (laughs) i literally just turned to to do something and realized i can't actually turn without excruciating pain so i'm having to hold both armrests and turn the entire chair and i'm thinking yeah i could rock a patrick stewart (laughs) i think you could to be fair yeah i'd watch a i'd watch an x-men with a barry nugent professor x yeah I die, I'm in my pyjamas. So not... Call up Kevin Feige, let's get him on the case. <laughs> yes. Hey, look, Disney, you know, digs, I mean, Marvel are trying to do different things. I mean, what's more different than Nuge in the chair? That's what it would be called. <laughs> That's what... Nuge in the chair. <laughs> Nuge in the chair. Um... Just me something like incredibly crazy crimes from the comfort of my chair with hot water bottle. But no Steve in sight because he's banished. Well, Steve is currently just sitting there. Um, for people that don't know, obviously, Stace knows because I just told her. Mm-hmm. I've got my back out because Steve the cat jumped on me in the middle of the night and dug his claws into me. And I leapt up. I say I leapt up, but I, I woke up with somewhat of a start. And I feel I left my back on the bed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel that's where it still is. And now Steve is quite happily licking his back at the moment whilst I look at him to say, yeah, bitch, it's what happens when you fuck with me. <laughs> He's like, look how flexible I am. Right. No, he's, yeah, he's now licking his toes, like, yeah, <laughs> bitch. <Okay. laughs> so, That's just rude, Steve. This is what you get when you don't feed me on time. I will fuck your shit up. <laughs> oh, was it actually your fault then? Or He seems to think so. Cats are, are a bit notorious for being like, you haven't fed me, even though you've like just fed them, aren't they? <laughs> you know? like, like, they give you that look as if to say, you're a negligent parent. Yeah. And then you're like, you, you've got food right there, you stupid cow. Like, anyway, there's many reasons why I don't take care of animals. And that's one of them, is that I can't deal with the disdain that a cat <laughs> can dish out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why I love cats, is, is that sheer disdain. <laughs> he's now turning his back on me oh no i think it's time for a segment don't you Let's do some geeky stuff that's what we're here for Let's do some geeky segments i don't know what that was I, I, <laughs> <laughs> like it just fell out of my mouth and i was thinking spooky and that was the opposite that's complete opposite of spooky it couldn't have been more any jaunty less <laughs> yeah. any less it sounded um, like the theme to Captain Pugwash. <laughs> I've never seen that, so um, I don't know how that seeped into Good my job brain. Good job creating the theme. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Is it just one of those things that's just like floating around in the zeitgeist and I've just absorbed yeah. it and I don't know what it is? Yeah. Um, should we do a bit of a pick of the fortnight first? Do it. I've got a strong feeling that our picks of the fortnights and maybe even our musical musings might be the same or very similar. <laughs> Oh, I don't think they will be, but I'm interested now because you, oh, okay. you know, I might suddenly change my pick and go, yeah, I'm doing that. <laughs> well, my pick for pick of the fortnight is um, Werewolf by Night. <laughs> oh. <Ooh. laughs> was, that, was that on the on the tip of Barry's picks? <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. And because what? I think my look, extreme pain. So, <laughs> however... <laughs> No, and actually, when you hear what my pick is, there's, there's a similarity there. However, I did watch Werewolf by Night, and my my takeaway from that is, why was it one your one episode? Oh, mate, like I was saying to Rich that um, 
I was excited about it anyway because I love Michael Giacchino, um, the composer, Mm -hmm. who was directing this. Now, I don't think I've seen anything that he's directed before because I think he's just directed like a very small handful of TV shows I've never seen. Um, So I didn't know what to expect of him director-wise, but I was like, look, if he can direct a film as well as he can an orchestra, I'm down, bro. (laughs) And and he can, as it turns out. Yeah, he can. (laughs) He really can. I've never read a Werewolf by Night comic, and I've never seen a Universal Monster movie. So you would think that this would have sailed over my head as like a, just listen to that whooshing sound as this just (laughs) sails, just sails by me. But I had a really good time with it, even though I didn't really know what it was doing. But I liked everybody in it. I thought it was a fun little story. I loved, oh, I was going to say something then that might be a really big spoiler, so I won't. (laughs) But yeah, I was very pleasantly surprised by it. But I said to Rich, I was quite happy that it was just like a 55 minute thing. Like I feel like. And I don't want to be one of these people who are like, films are too long nowadays, because not all films are, but some films are definitely overstay their welcome. (laughs) Um, And some TV shows as well, either the episode's too long or they get too many or they get too many seasons and it's just a bit like that. Whereas this was just like, here's this story that we've got, boom. And I was like, oh, okay, I am. Yeah, I'm very down with this. Um, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, I agree. I think my, I thought the one-off idea I thought was great. I suppose my thing was there was a there was one of the characters in there I would have loved to have seen a bit more of her. I yeah, I hope she gets like maybe a little spinny off, either a show or a maybe another yeah. like you know sort of one-offy type episode or something because she was pretty rad. <laughs> and someone to describe because I had no idea who she was before. And they said, oh, there's a character called Elsa Bloodstone. I said, ooh, ooh, okay, I like the sound. Good name, yeah. And then someone basically told me, yeah, she's kind of a bit like Buffy. I'm like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> um, and she's like a monster hunter. I'm like, yep, I'm in. And I have to admit, I didn't know what the premise of this was. I'd seen the trailer. The trailer didn't really give anything away. No. But when I sat down to it, it was like, oh, yeah, they're all kind of monster hunters. I was like, oh, okay, if I'd known that before, I'd have been even more excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. could have. I think, like you said, the one episode I think was a was a grand idea and it worked really well. I I wouldn't. Two episodes wouldn't have hurt me. Yeah. An episode with her of how she kind of got to where she was. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have hurt. But you're right. Not everything has to be like a six or eight episode season. Yeah. Well, I think I think for me because like this felt like a short film rather than yeah. a. A sort of tv show so like i feel like we could easily see these characters doing other things in other stuff and i would be very happy with that because i liked an awful lot of them but i think as i think not only is it not only was this story like nice and tight and just like in and out boom job done but also i think the way that it was like sort of filmed and presented to us may have been great and if that was a whole series like, I don't know if the novels yes. that would have worn off. Yeah, yeah, um, think, yeah, because it was all, all in um, black and white with some flashes of colour. Yeah, and, like, there was, like, occasionally there was, like, um, like old school film, like, blippity bloops. I don't know what you would yeah. call them, you know? <laughs> well, blippity bloops work well. <laughs> I'm sure everybody it's knows what I mean. Term. You can look it up on Wikipedia. Yeah, the, uh, the old school film blippity bloops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I think it was one of those things as well like when I saw it I immediately thought Barry's gonna love this because I was like it's a little bit pulpy it's a little bit monsters it's, more, it's a little yeah. bit yeah <laughs> it's a little bit uh yeah I just I just thought it was really enjoyable and um like I, I would happily watch other 55 minute weird Marvel things like this that aren't yeah. potentially necessarily that consequential to the MCU at large, but are a good laugh. Just nice cool. tight little stories. Yeah. 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 No, I agree with that. And you're right. I, yeah. You're right. It did very much feel like a short film. And in some ways, given the premise of it, I feel like if you tried to stretch it out to like an hour and a half, you might have struggled with it. And, you know. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it might've got flabby at that yeah, point. It was very lean. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was great. Good and choice. of course, top-notch score <laughs> by oh, yes. by Michael Giacchino himself. So yeah. you know, gotta love it. 
I actually thought my pick of the thought that I was going to dovetail this, but actually it's my Saturday morning comics that dovetails this. My pick of the fortnight, weirdly, is um, so I've been going back and watching sort of say old films. I mean, they're, they're hardly like 1960s films, but I've just been going back and I've just gone, oh, do you know what? I might give that a rewatch. I haven't watched that in a while. So I watched, um, have you, do you remember a film called Now You See Me? I do, yeah, because I was very annoyed that the sequel wasn't called Now You Don't. <laughs> Good point, yeah. <laughs> what a missed yeah. trick. <laughs> what, yeah. what a missed, yeah, what a missed opportunity. Um, and for people who don't know, basically, Now You See Me was about a group of um, magicians who orchestrated all these kind of um, elaborate heists culminating this sort of big sort of high slash sort of magic trick. And there's lots of twists and turns and it's got a great cast. Phenomenal music score by Brian Tyler. Oh, nice. And I just kind of, and I love heist. I love kind of heist books. And I love magicians. I grew up watching David Copperfield as a kid and I love those. I don't care what anyone says, I love David Copperfield. It's a hill I'll die on. Um, <laughs> you die on that hill? Yeah. Dude escaped from Alcatraz and made it actually be disappear. There's nothing he can't do. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, yeah, so I watched it with that kind of, oh, you know, just. By the end of it, I was like, oh, my God, I love this film. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, I'd forgotten how much I enjoyed it because it's just fun and it's sassy and we don't have a lot of that these days. I think everything just feels, everything's a bit kind of, no one's good, no one's evil, everyone's grey and everything's a little bit bleak. So it's just quite yeah. nice just to watch something with people just kind of going, hey, I'm a magician, I steal shit, look at me. And I'm sassy. So uh, the second one wasn't as good, but I still enjoyed the second one. But the first one, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, so that is uh, that's my pick. And it's got Mark Ruffalo in it. Just been little, oh, okay. Little link in. <laughs> Have you seen it? I haven't, no. Yeah. I um, There was a reason, and I feel like it was because there was some particular person in it that I don't like very much. So I was like, ah, oh, mate. But I can't remember who that was off the top of my head now. You've got Jesse Eisenberg. Eisenberg. Yeah, I remember he was. I can't remember who it was. Mm. Oh, well. Maybe I'll give it a whirl at some point. Yeah. I've got the week off next week. But yeah. yeah. Did Sooner. you ever watch um, the Lupin, Lupin TV series? No, but I, but I really want to because I. Me and Rich, a, a few like two years ago or something, did this thing where we're like, right, we're going to watch all the uh, all the Studio Ghibli films from the start. So we watched The Castle of Cagliostro, which is like the Lupin, like oh, Ghibli anime, Lupin anime. movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that was one of the best things I've ever seen in my fucking life. Definitely. And I just like instantly fell in love with Lupin. I was like, I love him. He's the best thing since sliced bread. He's great. Let's put more of him in my eyes. And then I didn't because I'm an idiot. <laughs> But this is this is different. Mm. See, this is based on, which is what the Lupin cartoon is based on, is the um, the books of yeah. Arthur Lupin, the Gentleman Thief. And basically, this guy is like a black guy. He's kind of read. It's a bit of a long-winded story, but he's kind of read all the books and stuff. And he's this kind of like con man, master disguise and whatever. And again, it's just sassy. And I think the guy who directed this, I think, is the guy who directed the Now You See Me films. Oh, okay. Because I think, because I remember liking the Nay See Me films, and then when they were announcing Lou Dupont, one of the things I saw was like, oh, it's directed by a guy who'd done Nay See Me. I'm like, okay, well, I know it's going to be sassy, so I'm in. And boy, was it sassy. He also wears my hat and pretty much has nicked my look, but that's okay. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that about yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you should you should put your eyes on that one. I will. I, I definitely. It's it's been on the radar for a while, but it's like me and Rich were looking at the list of things that we just haven't caught up with yet the other day, and we were like, Dear, "Oh God, I need to win the lottery and quit my job yeah. so I can watch all the things that I want to watch." Still haven't finished Legion for fuck's sake. You're right, actually, come to think of it, I've forgotten half of what happened in it as well because it was one of those shows that was like, it made sense if you paid attention to it, but now that I've it's I've, there's a little bit of time, time yeah. I'm like I don't know what was happening. <laughs> yeah, there's a few shows like that have kind of fallen between the cracks, and when I try to go back, I'm kind of like I really need to watch the first season again, and I'm like I just haven't got that in me. Mm. Although I do like looking at Dan Stevens, so yeah, and Aubrey Plaza and Jermaine Clement. Do you know what? I might just rewatch it. <laughs> And that's the very definition of coming full circle. <laughs> right. Let's have a trumpet. Let's have a trumpet. Do 
that was slightly more spooky, I guess. It was like a jaunty ghost. It's like a ghost who's got some pep in his step. I um, kind of feel, before we do that, I've been thinking in between segments that mm-hmm. I kind of feel Nuge, mystery man in a chair, because I've extended it a little bit. I've like <laughs> got legs, and I feel it could be like a franchise, like the Knives Out franchise, where I just, well, I don't yeah. travel the world. I basically just stay in my chair with a... A heated pack and uh, um, and struggle with stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just stay and then, then the crimes come to me, and I I just me and Steve the cat just solve crimes. Um, Fair enough. Whilst my um, hot water bottle is being changed. <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a grower. I think you're on to a winner. Yeah, maybe <gasps> the, maybe maybe this is the very definition of a film that would only be fifty minutes. <laughs> just nice and lean keep it lean keep it lean lean lean, lean. <laughs> so what happens well basically I stay in the chair for the whole time and I I solve crazy crimes so do you leave the house nope nope never <laughs> people are like oh so we just see like the one room of your head yeah shut up yeah, it's great yeah, it's great so everyone comes to me it's fine it's fine yeah. You know that scene like where in the in the mystery where you get everyone in and you have to sort of solve you have to sort of go, you're the killer. You have right? to like implicate everyone. Yeah, and then... <laughs> because my house is quite small, we'll have like a little five-minute segment. Where like, no, no, you can't sit there. You're going to have to move back and I have to organise everyone before I can solve the mystery. <laughs> it was just like itself, Stace. Yeah, um, you, you, let it, you let it like itself be. Okay, okay. Right okay. What, what segment are we on? Uh, shall, we, shall we do musical musings? <laughs> yes, let's do that. How? Well, no, stop coffee. <laughs> No. Just stop all movements. <laughs> God Think damn you, all... God damn you. Dearie me. Um, hey, mine is, I can do mine real fast because it's uh, it's the main title from <laughs> Werewolf by Night. <laughs> oh, here we go. Which, um, so I don't know if you've listened to this on Spotify, but the whole soundtrack is great. But the main title, which is actually spelled M-A-N-E, like a scary wolf's mane. Ooh, do you get the joke? Mm. Do you get the joke? Um, <laughs> the reason I p- <laughs> the reason I picked this song in particular is because it's it starts off with the uh, you know the usual like Marvel Studios riff, and then it just takes it into like the movie Universal Monster movie territory, and then it twists it again into like a spooky sort of intro to the to the premise of the thing, and it's just like a really fucking good song <laughs> um when i was listening to it on the bus the other day the whole soundtrack there is one particular song though that gets real quiet and then it does that sort of like orchestral jump scare and uh, oh, yeah. so just you know, be aware of that if you're somewhere in public and you don't want to accidentally let out a fear to or something yeah, um, i was listening to it in my current condition and i don't think i need another jump scare no you don't you absolutely don't um but yeah loved it because I, 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 I like that marvel studios riff anyway even though it's like yeah. really short but it's very sort of like oh recognizably like marvel superheroic but then this is like oh but it's spooky <laughs> <laughs> it's halloween <Ooh. laughs> yeah, exactly it's really fun um and i liked it a lot and also you know we love michael giacchino don't we because yes, he's a good do. egg yes, it's do. a good egg what's your well, pick b i just want to say a uh, quick shout out michael giacchino if you've never, if you've not listened to it, I know you will have done, but it's just for the people in cheap seats. Go and listen to the incredible soundtrack. Oh, mate! You're welcome. Ships kiss. Just. <laughs> what a soundtrack, just man! Sass in a bowl. Um, <laughs> yes. <yeah>, so, <laughs> my uh, musical musing is, uh, it's actually from the um, "Now You See Me" uh, soundtrack. Um, We're so predictable. We what are, are we doing? We are, I'm going to throw a curveball next episode. People won't even, they just won't know. They'll be like, oh, wow. Actually, my curveball is it's not from the Now You See Me soundtrack. It's from the Now You See Me 2 soundtrack. God damn it. It's from the Now You Don't soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, that's what it should be called. Um, it's the main titles by uh, Brian Tyler. And <laughs> we've both picked main titles. I know, like. I know. But if you want to hear, I know I've just said Sass in a Bottle for Incredibles, but if you want to hear, like, Sass in a can, <laughs> exploding everywhere, mm-hmm. shaking it up, you listen to those main titles, and you, you, you'll just start automatically walking in slow-mo wherever you are. <laughs> I'm going to test that out tomorrow. <laughs> that, that sassy. 
and you want to just have a hat and you just tip it to someone whilst you steal their wallet and then walk on sassy style. You won't get anywhere because you've been walking in slow-mo the whole time. I'm, yeah. I'm in a lot of pain. Nothing's making sense anymore. <laughs> Oh, Barry. The old man in the chair solving crazy mysteries. <laughs> Moving everywhere in slow <laughs> Moving everywhere in slow <laughs> um, The one thing I will say about this is um, it's got, uh, now you see me too, it has, um, I was going to say Harry Potter, but it's not Harry Potter. It's, um, <laughs> what's his face? I can't remember his name now. He plays Harry Potter. Daniel Radcliffe? Yeah, it's got Daniel Radcliffe in it. And he's supposed to be playing an unlikable person. Um, and boy, does he go to town being an unlikable person. <laughs> just spend the whole time, and he's got a really, really shitty beard as well. Whenever he comes on, you just like want to take him aside and just give him a kick in. I love how I love how he sort of did Harry Potter, and then was like, right, what can I do that's distinctly not fucking Harry Potter, yeah. please? And has just done like loads of things that are like murdery or horrory or and isn't he playing Weird Al in an upcoming yes. Weird Al movie which yeah. seems like it's going to be insane I'm quite looking forward to that actually although <laughs> it's one of those things I was saying to Rich I don't know enough about Weird Al though to be able to watch it and know what's jokes and what's real <laughs> <laughs> it's like sometimes I'll watch like an autobiographical thing and, and just believe everything I see and then find out later that like half of it was total yeah, bullshit <laughs> Or just like exaggerated extremely for effect, and I'm like, oh. Well, we just watch. We just finished watching something called The Watcher on Netflix. Oh. Um, which potentially had the most stupid family I've ever seen. <laughs> in that, when you see like a lot of these like horror type scare films, or whatever, and this is this was a series where like you know you you, you spend the whole time going, oh, don't go upstairs. Why are you doing this? Blah blah blah. Mm. Literally within five, they they go to see this property, and they go, "This place is lovely. We want it. We've got to live here." Within five minutes of them going in that scene, I had at least fifteen indicators that I would one never ever buy that house, Mm -hmm. and two never ever set foot anywhere near that house or potentially that town ever again. (laughs) And then they're they're surprised when weird stuff happens and shit starts to go wrong, and they're surprised, and they just stay in there. Stupid, oh god, stupid, 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 stupid. I watched Poltergeist for the first time recently because I'm doing there's a podcast called Nightmare on Film Street that have done like a 31 days of horror like prompt list for October. So yeah. I'm trying to follow it. And uh, and I watched Poltergeist the other day. And all I could think was is that woman gets so unnecessarily excited about things moving around her house, whereas I'd be like, pack it up, pack it up, <laughs> folks, we're off. Dude. We don't live here anymore. We d- just d- just forget it. Do you know what? Leave your things. We're going. <laughs> there's a there's a great Eddie Murphy sketch where he talks about and he uses Poltergeist where he talks about a difference between like a white family and a black family. Mm. <laughs> where he sort of says like you know with the Poltergeist he's kind of like he said if my daughter got stuck at the TV I would be fucking gone. I'd go down, <laughs> then I'd go down to the police station to tell them this is my daughter's in the TV set. It's like, I, I've come down here to tell you because I didn't want you to feel like I killed her or anything. She's in the TV set. That shit is all yours. I've left it there. <laughs> and then he says, like, she was only six in the film. They couldn't have been too attached to her. <laughs> and there's a bit where, like, and he said, I think he talked about the Amityville Horror, where he kind of says, like, in the Amityville Horror, and I think he's right, that the house actually tells them to get out and yeah. they stay. And you and stay? Yeah, and what? he says, like, a black family would walk in and go, this house is, this house is beautiful, and this house is beautiful, it's lovely, Venetian blinds, oh, this is a lovely house, we're going to have so much fun living here, baby, get out. Well, too bad, we can't stay. <laughs> oh, what's that there, Tom, to go? Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'd like to expand that by saying this, this isn't, this isn't a, a white person, a black person problem, this is a stupid person problem. It get is, people, yeah. You should know better, get the fuck out. Yeah, if I turned around, right, if I was in my kitchen and then I turned around and all of my chairs were arranged in a pyramid on the kitchen table, I'd be like, well, that's it. I know I'm going to live here. <laughs> I'd be phoning the agency like, I don't even care if you keep taking my money. I'm go- I'm, I'm gone. Yeah. I've got, I've, I've burnt it. Yeah. <laughs> the whole house burnt down. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, have we got time for a last little segment? A segmento? Yeah. Go on then. Yeah. Go on then. Jazz. It's Saturday morning comic. 
weeks. In it though. In it though. I'm gonna let you go first because okay. I'm nice like that. This was, huh? the, this was the aforementioned dovetail that I was talking about with Monster okay. Night Night. I think I mentioned the uh, volume one of this comic on an episode before. Do you remember me talking about a comic series called Prodigy? Do you know what? I don't. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm in this one. Let's hope. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, no. <laughs> so basically, this is kind of a modern day... Right, I'll read you the blurb. It'd be an easy way to put it. For, so, <coughs> second, so I read the first volume, which was Prodigy, um, The Evil Earth, which was fantastic. Um, and this is the second volume that I'm reading at the moment. I'm four issues in, I think issue five, which is the final issue I think comes out this month. Um, so this is by um, Mark Millar, and art is by Matteo Buffaggi. Buf- 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 yeah. Come on, how's that spelled? B U F F A G N I. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, that's a hard one. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. Winding your neck in, are we? Buffan, B- uh-huh. But but no. Do you yeah. know what? It's not uh-huh. Matteo, isn't it? Yeah, comedy's gone, now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was I wasn't trying to make a tit of you. I was trying to be a helpful co-host, but then I realised that <laughs> I don't have an idea either. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> The blurb is, Edison Crane is the world's smartest man, but what happens when he's targeted by an entire club of geniuses who fly too close to the sun? Meet the Icarus Society. So um, Edison Crane is, he's kind of like Doc Savage. If for people who don't know who Doc Savage is, Doc Savage could do everything. Look him up. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do your work for you. That's your kind of work. Go and look up Doc Savage. Um, and the first volume I loved it because basically it's it's modern day um pulp adventure that that's what it is and it does it brilliantly the art is glorious and this guy can do everything in fact he's so like smart that it shows you his inner workings and basically it's just loads of him inside his brain doing different things okay. like he's kind of compartment he can kind of compartmentalize his brain so like one part he'll be like I don't know, uh, coming up with some brand new invention. Another part of his brain will be like he's writing a new symphony, symphony, symphony and it's all different versions of himself. And uh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, and this second volume is taken like, it's like full on pulp adventure, even right down to kind of, you know, world globe trotting and traps and, and all sorts. And I, I love it. Absolutely love it and i know this is one of these ones where i think it's potentially tapped to be a um netflix show because i think a lot of mark last stuff he kind of does to yeah uh, pitch to netflix personally the comic on its own i'm happy but i would also love to see this as a um as a show as well yeah um, I, I never know now if I actually want things to be made into shows because they take them away yeah. from me so fast. Like Paper Girls isn't getting a series two by the looks of it, and I'm like, yeah. oh, fuck off, lads. <laughs> it's <laughs> very infuriating. My thing is as well is that if they did do this, certainly if they did the first volume as a TV show, it's it's very so it's it's self-contained. Yeah. So that's good. Know, yeah. And that's what I quite that's another thing I quite like about it. It is self contained. You could actually have just jumped in to this volume and be quite happy. But I would but I'd say you're missing out by not reading the first volume. Fair enough. <laughs> it's awesome. Nice. Wow. <laughs> We out. Uh, I can be very quick about mine because I'm almost positive I would have talked about it before. Okay. But um I have started collecting the IDW collection Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Big Sexy Hardbacks because I oh, I was following, like I, everybody knows I love the turtles and I was following the IDW comics and absolutely fucking loving them but then I ran out of space to store floppies so I was like right I'll get trades and then I got a couple of trades and then I fell behind with those and then <laughs> and then uh, I was like I'll oh, it digital it'll be fine and then now it's almost impossible to like get digital comics in a sensible fucking way and actually <laughs> read them sensibly. Yeah. So yeah, so I was like, fuck it. Um, but then the other day I was doing a little browse on Amazon and it was like, here are things that you might like based on things what you've already bought. And um because I buy far too much Ninja Turtles related 
uh, merchandise. <laughs> it was like, it was like, what about this sexy hardback? Why don't you? Um, and I was like, oh, I've got a birthday voucher. Why indeed, don't I? So now I've started collecting those. Yeah, and I've got to say, they're a bit fucking wonderful. Um, first of all, I'd sort of forgotten how much I like having actual physical comics in my hands. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's like, it's on like nice, fancy, glossy paper and the hardback is gorgeous and like the cover's wonderful. The first volume is issues 1 to 12 plus the five. They were like, towards the start of the um, the run, there were like five uh, one-offs that were like, one for each of the turtles and then one for Splinter. Okay. So they're all in there. Uh, and they're all in the order that you're supposed to read them as well, which is wonderful <laughs> because I am le div, um, <laughs> <laughs> as the French would say. <laughs> so I like often get confused about what order I'm supposed to be reading things, but handily, this is all just in there for you. And there's also like little extra contenty bits like the variant covers and things like that. And it is just absolutely glorious and i love it and volume two arrived in the post today i'm very excited to nice. stick my face into that but i've got to say i am already worried <laughs> i know this is really sad i'm already wondering about whether i can actually read issue 44 again <laughs> i don't think i can handle it when i get to it b what's issue 44 oh god do you not remember okay this is a big clanging spoiler but it was from many years ago it's the one where donatello gets the absolute ever loving shit kicked out of him by bebop and rocksteady and you think he's dead at the end like the final page of the comic is like all of his brothers just like standing around him and splinter crouching next to him and he's just lying in a pool of blood and everybody's crying except raf who looks like he's going to kill something (laughs) 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 it's just it's like a full issue of donatello just like getting sledgehammered by a rhino and a oh it's awful it's so hot oh like i just i don't know if i might have to skip it (laughs) (laughs) i might i legit cried the first time i read it and i was on the bus at the time like reading a comic just having a cry like an absolute twat bag um shame in that yeah so i am i genuinely think i might skip it it'll depend on the mood i'm in i suppose on the day that i get there but um but other than that yeah i'm absolutely loving these uh fancy volumes they're so nice i have to say um i still have i bought um back in the day i bought a load of um i say a load because it's so expensive didn't buy that many um at the absolute editions like yeah expensive ones so i've got like new frontier and all star superman and done i've got long halloween i think yeah because that's my favorite batman story yeah, and they're just glorious and i keep thinking i, I must you know, I don't buy physical comics anymore, but I keep meaning to start up. But but with a view of saying I want to buy comics now where I can display them. Yeah. That, that makes sense, you know. Yeah. So like the um like the prodigy um comics I was just talking about, if he releases these as a hardback, I'm I'm all over them like wow. Yeah. Rice. Yeah. Yeah, I like, like, I've got to say, these look just gorgeous on the shelves already, and I've only got two. <laughs> so um, the, only th- the only thing I will say is that, like, they are very expensive. Yeah. So uh, they're likely going to end up on my wish list, and I'm going to have to do puppy dog eyes at me mum for Christmas. Can you give me volumes three and four, please? <laughs> Your mum. Poor blimey mother. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, absolutely loving them. I, honestly, the IDW Turtles comics, I can't think, like, I don't think I ever came across a bad one when I was reading them regularly. Yeah. Um, and I'm very excited to, like, catch up so I can... Because, like, like an idiot, I fucking sort of stopped reading them around the point where the new turtle came into it. And I'm like, why did I do that? She's really cool. Uh, <laughs> fucking idiot. But... <laughs> <sighs> yeah anyway that, exciting <laughs> oh it's time to go everybody barry needs to wheel himself to some meds probably or to hey, a new hot water hey these, these impossibly crazy crimes won't solve themselves exactly that person in a in an office chair with a bottle. <laughs> if you if you've committed a crazy crime why don't you uh take it straight to barry at geek syndicate yeah. <laughs> Or bring it to me and I'll I'll like PA it toward Barry. I'm yeah. at, St- at Stacey's Parlour on Twitter. Or you can send us an email to stacenbarry at gmail.com and, and admit all your crazy crimeage over there. You could um, be my sassy sidekick who like does does the legwork out in the streets because like I can't leave the house because I've got my hot water bottle. Mm-hmm. 
I like that actually. I could yeah. I could definitely do that. I listened to a podcast the other day with myself on. That's really sad. Um, but I was doing this thing right where I was a bit sad because I was working from home and Rich was at work and I was all on my own and I wanted to hear some friendly voices. So I listened to an episode of two grown men that was recorded live at the Southampton Superpod in like 2017 or some shit. I forgot what year it was, but they wrote an audio drama in which I played a character called Wendy Peril. And I've got to say, I enjoyed doing that quite a lot. Uh, so I would happily be the uh, Wendy, Wendy Peril equivalent <laughs> to you, if that's acceptable. Yeah, that's cool. We'll, we'll give you a name change. Okay. Yeah. Cause Wendy's my mom's name. So that's actually a little bit weird. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I would still solve like you know, crazy, crazy crimes um, <laughs> with your mum as well. But you know, your mum would have to have a shotgun. Don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't think I would trust her with a shotgun. If I'm honest. Okay. Um, I love your mum, but no, sorry. Look, we're going. It's yeah. have a have a bloody good day, everybody, and a bloody good until we see you again. I'm sorry this episode was late, but one of us, me, might have got COVID again. <laughs> Fucking fair. fucking funny. <laughs> oh, I hate it so much. Uh, anyway, we love you. Stay safe and um stay spooky. <laughs> Bye all. Bye.